Blow, by Charles Hoyfort, Part 1 Chapter 19F. The city of Nuremberg adopted Casper. He was sent to live with Professor Daumer, the well-known scientist, and the mayor of Nuremberg notified the public to keep away from his present residence, and thereby avoid collision with the police. The seeming paralysis of his legs wore off. He quickly learned the German language, but spoke always with a foreign accent. I have been unable to learn anything of the peculiarities of this accent, except to students of revivals of obliterated memories, his quickness of learning would seem incredible. Writers have said that so marvelous was his supposed ability to learn that he must have been an impostor, having a fair education to start with. Though the impostor theory is safest and easiest, some writers have held that the boy was an idiot who had been turned adrift. This explanation can be held simply and honestly by anybody who refuses to believe all records after the first week or so of observations. Whether impostor or idiot, the outstanding mystery is the origin of this continentally advertised boy. The look of all the circumstances to me is that somebody got rid of Casper, considering him an imbecile, having been able to teach him only two German sentences. Then the look is that he had not for years known Casper, but had known him only a few weeks, while his disabilities were new to him. Where this custodian found the boy is the mystery. Caspar Hauser, in the year 1829, wrote his own story, telling that, until the age of 16 or 17, he had lived upon bread and water in a small, dark cell. He had known only one person alluded to by him, as the man who, toward the end of his confinement had taught him two sentences, one of them signifying that he wished to join a cavalry regiment, and the other, I don't know. He had been treated kindly, except once, when he had been struck for being noisy. Almost anybody, reading this account, will, perhaps regretfully, perhaps not, say farewell to our idea of a teleported boy. That settles it. But nothing ever has settled anything, except relatively to a desire for settlement, and if ours is a desire for unsettlement, we have assurance that we, or any other theorist, can find in the uncertainties of any human document, whether supposed to have been dictated from on high, or written by a boy, material for thinking as our theories require. We note in Casper's story a statement that he had no idea of time. That is refreshing to our wilting theory. We may think that he had lived in a small, dark room all his life of which he had remembrance, and that that may have been a period of only a few weeks. We pick upon his statement that once he had been struck for being noisy. To us that means that he had been confined, not in the cell, or a dungeon, but in the room in the house, with neighbors around, and that there was somebody's fear that sounds from him would attract attention, or that there were neighbors so close to this place that the imprisonment of the boy could not have been kept a secret more than a few weeks. We're not satisfied. We hunt for direct data for thinking that, if Caspar Hauser had been confined in the dark room, it had not been for more than a few weeks.